In this video, we're going to talk about colorizing this terrain with sat maps. Uh, and we'll look at specifics such as mixing different sat maps so that it gives you a more comprehensive look um, while following a procedural workflow so that you can adapt it to any kind of terrain. Uh, we're also going to look at adding a bit of weathering to the colors so that it looks even more realistic. And then finally, we'll turn this into a seamless, tileable texture that can be reused in many different scenarios. Now, the principles that we're going to talk here, uh, talk about here, are going to apply to any kind of terrain, whether it's a medium or small scale one like this, uh, which is again, it's still a matter of perception. The uh, you know the shapes that we have, it could be a large canyon, um, but in any case, whatever uh, uh, size you're dealing with, large or small, the principles that you'll see here will apply. So I'm not going to really do much to this terrain because we're just going to focus on the colorization part. So the first thing we want to do is add a texture node. And the texture node, if you haven't used it before, it basically is going to create a mask uh, which will act as kind of a colorization guide. So it's created this and uh, it's using various different factors such as, which you can see here, slope, um, soil, uh, it's going to create random batches based on an algorithm uh, it has. And it's also going to add a bit of chaos so that it's not too uniform. And so we have this. Uh, you can see it's uh, prioritizing certain crevices, uh, kind of like ambient occlusion would. Uh, and so we have a very good starting point for this. Most of the time, I actually end up using just the texture node uh, and not much else. Because, well, in real life, um, you know, geological formations don't tend to have too much um, color variation. Uh, so anyways, so we have our texture and to view it in 3D, I'm going to go to the Rocky node and press G to pin it as the underlay. So here you can right click and also select here. So now when we look at a flat texture, we will see it overlaid on top of our underlay. So next we have our guide. We need a color. So I'm going to create a sat map and let's go find something that's more um, i don't know it's it's rock like gray and stuff like that so i'm just gonna search and well, let's go for this one yeah that's cool that's very rock like although you can notice that it's slightly dull not in exactly color terms but rather it's not that interesting and it's not really bringing out uh some of the nicer features in this so at this point, it might be tempting to go for a different sat map, but what I prefer to do is actually just have limited use sat map. So here, this one, it's limited use is just provide the grayness. And then we can find a new one that can provide it with some extra color. So I'm going to create a second sat map. And in this one, um, you know, let me search, I'll start from, um, you know, something that's a bit more colorful like this. So just by itself, this is also not as interesting, although it adds more color variation. It's a, a bit brighter uh, compared to this. So now let's see if we can get the best of both worlds. Now, I'm going to combine these two, uh, but we don't want uniform blending. Let's create, a, well, let's create a flow map. And uh, we can use that to help guide the blending. I'll go for primary and secondary uh, rainfall, and I'm going to increase the rainfall quite a bit. We're going to use very low quality because we don't want too precise shapes. We want kind of like slightly faded edge stuff, which, uh, you know, quarter quality gives us like this. So that's great. Um, let's feed that into the mask for the combined node and I will change the ratio to 100%. You can see we're starting to get that coming in into all these flow areas. Now, we can expand that. So I'll go and uh, down here in the post process section, I will uh, increase the shaper. Let's go here. Yeah, we're getting a bit better fade. So if you want to actually um, do this in real time and see the results. I'm going to right click and pin this node, the combined node. Then I'll go to flow and I'll tweak the, the shaper. 
you can see it's giving me a bit more uh you know it's 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 live feedback so i don't have to go back and forth so that looks kind of good so we'll leave it at that for the moment uh, we can come back and tweak this if needed so we kind of have our general texture map what i want to do next is i want to add a bit of weathering because right now what we have seems very um uniform but in real life you find that rocks have kind of weathered edges and that weathering can sometimes uh, be exposed to a different color so let's uh create one more sat map and you can see i'm just pulling all my sat maps from texture um, rather than trying to use flow combined with texture and so on instead i prefer to use flow or other maps as the 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 mask for combining different sat maps and that'll give you more options oh this looks cool oh this actually has a bit of edge weathering that i want to go for so that's really interesting i'll this we could use maybe later so i'll keep that aside let's create a different sat map and i'm gonna go to one of my go-to's which is uh, in the uh, rocky library in satellite maps it is uh, this one 117 so 117 i'm going to reduce the bias or increase the bias rather and make it go towards the edges it's actually pulling this map more towards this end so we're starting to get these whitish edges so there we go get that now all i have to do is just combine these two and i'll switch to screen mode uh 100 for now we can tweak as needed and so what's happening is that because this is more or less a, a quite a uh uh, you know not so saturated look uh, it's not contaminating our colors too much so this remains kind of uh, pristine and then we get to add this on top if you want to make it really pure you can go to sat maps for this uh, 117 in post processing you can turn on HSL and just completely undo saturation so this is now a grayscale map and then here you can see it's now giving us the same kind of little edges that we saw in um, this map so well these are cool and definitely useful we could actually just uh, replace this with this for example you want to see that works as well so the idea is basically that no matter what kind of map you have you can use something like this to uh, add a bit of edge blending um, oh sorry edge weathering you can also construct your own using the clutter node you can just make your own manual gradient um, this is just a, a very easy go-to i don't really bother making my own because there's really no need uh, and this has a bit of that uh, extra coloring here which can add some nice uh, grading to edges here anyways okay so this is done uh, as far as the weathering goes but I would still like to enhance the look of these rocks a bit more, especially if I'm viewing them from far away, I want the shapes to be more pronounced. Now, instead of trying to do that to my terrain, the, the, the height field, the shape itself, we can accentuate the, the slopes a bit. So I'm gonna drag out from the, the main shape node, uh, which is rocky, and then I'm gonna put in slope. So in slope, what I'll do is I'll actually reduce the minimum and maximum to zero and go 100% for the fall off. And it gives me this nice smooth graded slope map. Now I will uh, drag out from the combined nodes output and touch it to the slope node. And because the first one being uh, pulled in is color, it will convert this to a color as well, even though it's a mask. And here I will switch to multiply and then I can adjust the ratio as needed. So what's happening here is that uh, we're actually pulling in some of that slope to turn it into almost like an occlusion kind of map without uh, creating occlusion. This is very cheap, it's very fast to process as you can see 
and it follows the shape of the actual terrain very very precisely because unlike occlusion it doesn't undergo any sort of blurring um you have to be careful you don't want to go overboard like if i go 100% like this you can see this may start to look a bit fake uh, it can also look like you have um, you know overly intense normal map applied to this so don't go there uh, or if you need to have it be darker there's a trick you can use so I'm gonna lock my preview to combine and I'm gonna go to slope map and I can just increase the the maximum so it will now focus more on the crevices less on the flatter areas that can reduce it a bit and if you want further tweaking uh, you can always use shaper and control this so it pushes the shadows in so to speak um, but i now unlock this let's go back so you can compare it's like this is the difference you get and again i think something like 50 percent is more than enough because we don't want this to look uh you know too much so here again i'll zoom out a bit and let's compare like there's your rock looks great especially with all the little weathering that we did that accentuates the edges and then we have this so that's great now one last bit so uh if you want to use this as both a displacement and color map for creating 3d surfaces uh for example, you could apply this to uh, a flat plane and then use an FFD transform or some sort of mesh warping. You can just pull the pixels, or sorry, you can pull the vertices of the mesh and then apply uh, you know, some sort of subdivision modifier in whatever 3D app you like. Then if you apply this as your color and um, displacement map on top of that, you can create some very interesting cliff walls and um, other rock formations. Uh, there are a few examples of that on our website if you look at it. So anyways, let's say if you want to do that, you can take this map as is, but to give yourself more flexibility, you might want to turn this into a seamlessly tiling map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a seamless node for this. This is what makes tiling so easy. And you have two options. Uh, the first, the mandatory input is the terrain shape itself. And you would put in, you know, whatever is the last one uh, in your chain. So obviously we have this rocky. And you can see it's already turning it into a tiling thing. I have um, the preview turned on, so you can check it out. So it took this and it changed it to this. Now I can fiddle with the edge blending a bit. Uh, and I can also shift the maps, uh, you know, along both different axes uh, and toggle between how it's being done or just toggle between the preview to see how it's being done. But I think uh, just the default is fine. That looks great. And so if I also give it the texture, which is down here, uh, both of them have been converted. I will, uh, you can't see the preview right here, but if I drag this out and create a color effects node, you can see there it is. I will actually go here and then change the underlay to this and then this so we can preview both of it. And now all you have to do is export the seamless node. Uh, it'll give you both the, uh, the diffuse map and the displacement map. And so there you have it. Um, with a very, very simple network, you can create uh, complex textures, whether it's for rocks or for larger valleys or what have you.